A wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat exciting discovery in regards to one of the most mysterious features in the Milky Way galaxy. The feature that you sort of see right here, these are known as galactic center filaments. Super bizarre tentacle-like formations that seem to be present in a lot of different galaxies, but much more importantly, that seem to be all over the Milky Way galaxy as well. And though we've actually discussed these features several times in some of the previous videos, even today, as of 2025, after several decades of research and observations, researchers still have absolutely no idea what exactly this is, how it's produced, or even what's inside. And though you can learn about some of these new discoveries in a few recent videos in the description, mostly because some of the recent discoveries were only made a few years ago, and because of new advances in radio telescopes, in this video we're only going to focus on one of these filaments, the one whose name you see right here, and the one that seems to be the longest. It's also one of the filaments that has a proper name. It's basically known as the snake. But more importantly, we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries that sort of hint at possibly how these filaments are created, or at least show us why certain filaments seem to contain bizarre features. And so let's talk about this in a little bit more detail, but here I guess let's briefly start with a bit of a history. Because despite all of this being somewhat mysterious and somewhat poorly understood, this is definitely not a new discovery. Because the first observations and the first discoveries were back in 1984, and this was of course found completely unexpectedly. As a matter of fact, initially, this was actually believed to be either some kind of an artifact or some kind of a pixelation, and was believed to be a botched observation. Or in other words, this was believed to be not real. But following additional observations by multiple groups, and also observations using multiple wavelengths, hundreds and eventually thousands of these filaments were discovered all over the Milky Way, with some of the largest, longest and most pronounced filaments mostly being in the center of the galaxy, which is why they're usually referred to as galactic center filaments. But they all seem to be only visible in radio light, suggesting that they possess extremely strong magnetic fields and possibly emit what's known as synchrotron radiation, or basically radiation emitted by particles moving extremely close to the speed of light in somewhat magnetized conditions. Usually these particles are electrons. But the source of these particles, and really pretty much everything about the mechanism of the formation here, is completely unknown. For example, in this image you can actually see some of the circular structures, and these structures we can usually explain, you can actually learn about this in one of the previous videos in the description, but usually these are results of supernova or some really massive eruptions from some kind of a really really powerful object. But the filamental objects are very difficult to explain, especially when they have these super bizarre shapes. But more recently, in the last two years, researchers also discovered that, apparently, they come in two different types. They seem to be either vertical or horizontal. And both vertical and horizontal filaments contain slightly different properties. You can sort of see a mixture of both in this image right here. And so the horizontal filaments, which run parallel to the galactic plane, and normally away from the galactic center, very often also appear to emit thermal radiation, or basically they're also visible in the infrared light. This is believed to be the result of some kind of an acceleration inside various molecular clouds. And here it's possible that their origin is actually the result of emissions from Sagittarius A star, the central black hole. So basically these horizontal filaments could be the result of super ancient black hole emissions. Emissions that essentially started to interact with a lot of gas around the black hole, possibly ionizing this gas and causing it to accelerate away from the center, forming these very strange lines. And normally these lines are 5 to 10 light years in length, but are also much much lower in total number. In contrast, the vertical filaments seem to be entirely different. First of all, most are super long. Some of them can reach length of up to 150 light years, or basically 10 to 15 times longer. At the same time, their position is almost always perpendicular to the galactic plane. Now, some of them do have a bit of an inclination, but the majority are basically practically vertical. And in most cases, all of these vertical filaments seem to possess very strong magnetic fields, basically serving as a kind of a particle accelerator, which is why we can even see them. And strangely enough, many of these vertical filaments very often come with partners or even come in pairs and do actually form these really bizarre shapes that are somewhat difficult to explain if this was just magnetic lines from the galaxy itself. In other words, whatever is happening here is still extremely mysterious and poorly understood, with a somewhat regular spacing as if something separated them with a very specific distance. 
Moreover, additional analysis from other galaxies suggested that something similar exists there as well. Very often somewhere near the center and very often forming somewhat similar bizarre filaments and bizarre patterns. And so because of this, over the years there has been a lot of different propositions. For example, back in the days it was assumed that maybe this is actually signs of these mysterious cosmic strings. Ancient formations from the early universe, resembling a kind of a crack in the space-time itself, produced during the expansion of the universe. But because usually strings are expected to oscillate and produce a lot of gravitational waves, as well as maintain their shape over time, here the observations did not make sense, mostly because a lot of these filaments seem to split. And it's actually these unusual deformations and these bizarre splits that can actually explain to us what's going on here, which is essentially the main focus of this recent study. Here the focus was on these bizarre kinks that many of these filaments sometimes contain. But here the focus is on the snake, one of the longest, brightest and most spectacular filaments that contains two kinks within its total length of about 230 light years. So yeah, this is a super long object. And here we have what's known as a major and a minor kink, or basically deformation, where this filament seems to be distorted from its somewhat linear magnetization, as if something is present in this particular location disturbing the magnetic lines. And so in a very thorough study you see right here, the main researcher Yusuf Zadeh analyzed this deformation by using several different telescopes and actually did discover the potential source for what's happening here, in the end even presenting a potential explanation for how these filaments form. Here by using the Chandra telescope, the XMM telescope, new stars, and of course the observations by radio telescopes, researchers didn't just detect radio emissions, they also detected X-rays. And specifically, the new observations looked something like this. There was actually something next to the filament. With further modeling and analysis, revealing that this kink was possibly formed by something really dense, really powerful, and something moving very fast. And so here the X-ray emissions actually reveal to us a pulsar. Detecting through the X-ray emissions very close to the snake and super close to its major kink. With the conclusion from the study basically suggesting that this was very likely formed when a fast moving pulsar, moving at approximately 500 to maybe even 1000 kilometers per second, passed through the snake or extremely close to it, distorting the magnetic structure in the process. And so here this pulsar, now referred to as G359.13, seems to be the origin for this bizarre deformation. It essentially perturbed the magnetic field, resulting in this somewhat strange shape. And this has now been confirmed to be a pulsar, both in the X-ray emissions and radio light. Which potentially suggests that this is something that happens in a lot of locations, because we see these all over the place. But here the other proposition is actually in regards to the origin of the filament itself. In this study researchers also suggest that there is a high chance now that these filaments might be the result of a very strange phenomenon coming from pulsars themselves. And specifically the phenomenon referred to as Pulsar Wind Nebula, PWN. And in this case this is based on an older proposition on the formation of these bizarre filaments. Here it's possible that some of these vertical filaments could form as a result of various pulsar wind nebula, or these extremely powerful clouds produced by pulsars, interacting with various interstellar magnetic fields, which then basically form these extremely long and extremely powerful vortices, kind of like these galactic tornadoes. In other words, the fact that there is a pulsar in this region, and the fact that it seems to be responsible for at least part of the shape, basically suggests that there's a chance it might have produced the entire structure. In this case, through the injection of synchrotron emitting electrons into various magnetic field tubes as the pulsar and the pulsar wind nebula pass through this region. And if so, or if this hypothesis is correct, it would basically suggest that all of these filaments are possibly the result of various pulsars interacting with magnetic fields from molecular clouds. And since neutron stars are usually some of the most powerful magnets in the entire universe, here they should be able to form some really bizarre structures as they interact with various magnetic fields. In other words, the discovery of this pulsar inside the snake currently presents us with a somewhat intriguing explanation for all of these strange vertical filaments. And so maybe just maybe after 50 years, we finally have at least one solid explanation for what's actually happening here. But obviously because this is just the first such discovery, we would have to find even more pulsars near other kinks and other filaments in order for all of this to make sense. And so until future discoveries or until we find something entirely different, that's all I wanted to mention. 
Check out some of the previous videos on the similar topic and similar discoveries in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about science, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining your channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.